Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve valid perfect square, lead code number 367. So we're given a positive integer num, and we need to return true if num is a perfect square and false otherwise. So a perfect square is an integer that is the square of an integer. In other words, it is the product of some integer with itself. So basically, num is equal to 16. It is a perfect square because four is an integer. Four times itself, so four times four, is equal to 16, which is the number. So that number is a square of another integer, which is four, and therefore it is true for this case. Now, the interesting part of this is that, well, if you have 16, well, you could obviously just square root that. And so if you square rooted that, you would get four. And so if you came up with an integer, so if you got 16, you square rooted to get four, which is an integer, you'd return true. But if you had like 15 and you square rooted that, it has a square root, but it's not gonna be an integer. It'll be like three point something. So that's why they have this extra constraint here. You must not use any built-in library function such as square root. Okay, so any capacity of doing a square root, even like the power to one half or something like that, you can't do that. All right, so let's suppose we're given that same example there of num is equal to 16. And we know it should be four squared, aka returning true. So it has to be the square of an integer. Well, integers are a countable set here. So you could really just say like, okay, is it one? That's the first positive integer. One squared is equal to one times one, which is equal to one. Okay, it's not that. Two squared, that is equal to two times two, which is four. Three squared is, as you know, nine. And then we'd find it at four squared is equal to 16 here. Okay, so really we're looping over this range of one, two, three and four. So we're just trying all the integers in order here. Okay, what if we had a different example as num is equal to 17? Okay, well, we'd still find that one squared is one and that two squared is four and that three squared is nine and still four squared is 16. But now take a look at this. Okay, this is fine, but five squared is equal to 25. This number that you created here, this square is bigger than your number. And once that happens, they're all going to be the case. Like if you do six squared, well, that'll be even bigger than that because we're just squaring even bigger integers. The brute force solution would be to enumerate over all of the integers until you get to the case where your integer squared is actually bigger than your number. And once you hit that case, you'd immediately return false. And if you kind of found it in that iteration, then you'd return true. Okay, so we're not going to actually enumerate this range. We're not going to say one up until 17 because that's again kind of an O of n solution where that's the size of your number there. You just specify your beginning and end points to the range. So the lowest could be here, aka we'll call that L for a binary search, and the biggest could be over here, which is number. And we'd get our middle value. The middle value would be 17 plus one, which is 18, integer division by two. That, as you know, is going to be exactly nine. Now we need to check if this value squared is this number. It's not, we'd get that M squared is actually 81, nine times nine. And this is way too big, okay? So we need to start looking in this range. Obviously 10 squared and 11 squared and beyond is just gonna be more and more too big. We would need to be in this range over here. So just like with normal binary search, you would say that R is then equal to M minus one, AKA R is equal to eight at this point. We get our range, we divided it in half because you know the range was one to 17. Now it's just one to eight, that's a lot better. We could say M is equal to nine divided by two integer division. So M is equal to four point five, but then you take the integer. So M is four. Okay. So very close here. We get M is the value of four. So the squared value is 16. We'll set L to be M plus one. So now we're at the very small range of just five to eight. You could get your middle value, which is going to be five plus eight over two, 13 integer division by two is 6.5 rounding down to six. M is equal to six. Six squared is actually 36. That is now too big. Okay. If you're too big, well, then we need to get smaller. R is equal to M minus one. R and L are now both equal to five. So these are both five. We have just one last number in this range here. We'd see that our M is equal to five squared, which is 25. And that value is not this value. Uh, it's too big. When it's too big, you'd want to try and search for a smaller one. We'd get R is M minus one. They would do this crisscross thing where R is on the left side of L. That's messed up. And so we did not find the number. In that case, then you would just return 
false because you escaped this search and you did not find it. Okay, and we kind of saw earlier that if in a different example where we did find the number, say that this was 16, well, we did actually at some point see like m is the value of four, aka that it's squared is equal to 16. There you could just immediately return true if you found that case. Okay, and this is going to be much faster by searching over the range via a log, basically cutting it in half every time. So it's going to be log base two of n, meaning we keep dividing this range in half every single time. It's going to be much, much faster than that linear solution. So let's code this up. Okay, let's first write the brute force solution. So you would want to say just basically for each number x in the range of, well, the first integer could be one, and then the last one could technically be num. In Python, that's going to be inclusive in the range of one to n here. Okay, so for each of these possible numbers, basically if x squared is equal to the num, well, then there you go. We could just return true. If you enumerate over all of this range and you never found it, well, then clearly it was not. And so you could return false. This solution will pass the run cases here. The time limit exceeds here actually only after nine test cases. Okay, you really do need the log solution. So let's write that one. So let's do a binary search. We'd have L is equal to one. That's the smallest possible integer it could be. The biggest possible integer it could be is actually num. So there's no way it's going to be bigger than that. But now we do while L is less than or equal to R, we get our M is equal to, as it always is in binary search, just the midpoint L plus R over two. And then you'd also get M squared. So M squared is just M times M or M squared, either one. And we'd say if num is equal to M squared, so if we found it, well, that's great. We could just return true. It is a perfect square. Uh, otherwise, these binary search conditions, if the M squared is actually too small, so if M squared is less than the num, you'd want to make it bigger. To make it bigger, you'd set L to be M plus one. Otherwise, if it was too big, you'd want to make it smaller and R should be equal to M minus one. All right, so that will run. We'll keep trying to find it. Same thing, if you never find it, we could just return false in this case. And this is going to pass both the run cases and very quickly blast through the submit cases. And just log solutions are so much faster. The time complexity is going to be big O of log n for this one, where n is the number right here. And the space complexity is just going to be O of 1. So that's constant space. We're not really storing anything at all. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.